Shabbat Shalom. Welcome back to Take Time for Torah. Over the next few weeks, instead of talking about and discussing the Torah portion of the week, we are going to uh, do our preparation for Elul, the month before Rosh Hashanah. And in that preparation for Elul, we will spend some time reflecting upon ourselves and how we can complete our own tshuva, our own repentance for this year, and prepare ourselves sufficiently as we welcome in the new year, and of course Rosh Hashanah, and then ask and seek forgiveness from God on Yom Kippur. By the end of Yom Kippur, we pray and hope that we will be not only written into the Book of Life for a good year, but we will also be sealed. So wait just a moment as we hear the blast of the shofar, a daily occurrence during the month of Elul, to remind us to wake up and get prepared, for the new year is coming, and we have new opportunities. Shabbat Shalom. Welcome back to Take Time for Torah. Again this week we're exploring ways in which we can prepare ourselves for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur during this month of Elul as we explore repentance and a way to change our ways so that we can create and begin the new year with a new lease on life and to be inscribed in the book of life for a good year. I want to call our attention this week to a verse from the Torah, from uh, Leviticus chapter 7, verse 1, that says, This is the Torah, or the teaching of the guilt offering. It is holy of holies. So our commentators ask this question on this particular verse. Why is the guilt offering called holy of holies? That's a special high category. That should only be reserved for ones who have never sinned. Um, not so, says the Clay Yakar, a commentator in the 16th century who uh, lived in Prague. He explains that a perfect tzaddik, a, a wise, enlightened person, is called holy, while a person who has sinned and brings an offering, who repents, is rather called holy of holies. This accords to the Talmud in Sanhedrin that states, a very saintly person cannot compare with the high level of those who have sinned and repented. Again, the Klei Yakar quotes another passage from the Talmud that teaches that the wicked acts of a repentant person are transformed into merits. Thus, one who sins and repents receives credit for the good deeds that he performs as well. Add to the sin, and he adds those to the sins which become merits. A tzaddik who only has good deeds is holy. But one who repents, who is a repentant sinner, his good deeds and his merits for repentance is the holy of holies. Think about that. A repentant sinner is more worthy than one who has never sinned. How can that be? We hold up people of great um, tzaddikut, of great righteousness, as the be-all, end-all. But what about most of us? All of us have sinned in some way. Don't we have merit? In fact, we have even more merit because we understand what it means to make mistakes and to do things that are wrong and to repent for those. And for that, that in a sense makes us even stronger as individuals. So I encourage you this week uh, um, and in the coming days, take an opportunity to turn your mistakes into merits. Figure out the mistakes you have made, offer the repentance, work on the repentance, work on your own accounting of yourself, and turn those mistakes into merits. And you too can be known as someone who is of the holy of holies, someone who understands what it means to do wrong, who understands even more what it means to do right. Shabbat Shalom.